So, what's interesting about you know looking around, looking online, and and seeing things is, of course, by Twitter. You know, because Twitter is <laughs> chock full of stuff. Uh, and if you hear anything in the background, I'm watching the Warriors and the Celtics NBA Finals right now. Um, but anyway, one of the things I noticed uh, from a place that I'm uh, the, uh, from a uh, place that I follow on Twitter called Owlry Archie Sonic, um, they posted something up there. And what they do is they post up pages from certain issues and all that, just like a lot of these groups do, or you know, tw Twitter pages do. And one of them that they put up there was one that was really intriguing. Really intriguing. You see, you know, it, it was the page from, I believe it was 232, I believe. I'm not really sure, 232, I believe. And what it was in 232 was the ending where Eggman basically had placed a power ring in the back of Sally. And he basically said, the Eggman's line was, that the power ring would give her the power she needs to uh, basically you know, match wits with Sonic, match power and speed with Sonic and stuff like that. But that he had done some modifications with it. Mostly the modifications would, you know, keep her from getting her free will. Now, in the last audio video I just did, where I talked about what um, Juice It, uh, Juice It, uh, uh, Juice It, uh, oh, basically Luke, we'll call him Luke. Juice It, Juice it Luke, we'll put it that way, um, said, is he always, you know, he said that basically Ian's got this, you know, affinity or this obsession with shock value. You know, he's got this thing with, with shock value and all that. And, um, you know, wanting to always incorporate it when he can, right? Well, I'm sure Juice It, Luke, if you will, would look at this moment and be like, how does that make sense, right? It's like, how does it make sense? In fact, I believe even, and I'm not saying this to kiss up to them or anything, because they know I support them either way. I'm sure that Team Season would even wonder, how is that possible since in the comics, you know, since in the comics and even in the cartoon, you know, that, they're try that they are uh, reviving as we speak, along with a lot of fans' help, you know, how is it possible that basically a power ring could be modified to prevent free will? I mean, we know that the power ring temporarily gives back free will, but how can it be modified? It doesn't make sense. Which, again, kind of plays into what I talked about uh, in the last video and just moments ago. Did Ian Flynn do that for shock value, or did he forget the understanding of what a power ring is truly capable of? You know, it's... You know, it, it doesn't make sense. I mean... Robotnik in the original cartoon wanted the power ring because he knew it would increase his powers. He wanted to study it, maybe modify it, we don't really know, but he wanted to study it to see how he can use its powers for his advantage. And we kind of got a taste of that in season one, if you know what I mean. We kind of got a taste of that in season one in the episode Hooked on Sonics. So, you know, so basically the question... But oh, so basically, the question is, how is it possible that you know this Robotnik, this Eggman, can modify it when it's been pretty much established that's not possible? I ask you that exact question because when I saw that again, you know, it brought up that question. It brought that question I've had ever since I read the issue, you know, and saw that page. It brought it up. And to me, it's like, how is that freaking possible? I mean, even someone like Mega Beat Man would be like, that doesn't make sense. Someone like Cyberpunk Jordan would basically be like, that doesn't make sense. Those at the Archie Sonic you know, Digest podcast would agree in a, in a way that that doesn't make sense. How can you, how can you modify a power ring 
to prevent free will. It doesn't work. It doesn't work, which is why I believe, and I say it with all due respect to Ian, he did what he did in Sonic Universe by having Ken Khan, Monkey Khan, give up his ring crown to save Sally from being completely burnt out, shut down, because her battery, the initial ring that Eggman put in her, was dying. And that because the reason he did that is why we started to see, as I put it, little signs of free will peeking through uh, when, you know, like Eggman sent Sally to Elias, to the village where Elias and his family were to hunt him down. And she, when she was fighting off Tails, gave him the option of, hey, you either capture me or you save that village. What's it going to be? And instead of t attacking him from behind, she didn't. Instead, she let him go. And instead of pursuing after her brother, after he escaped with his family, what did she do? She just stared out the window, almost with a regrettable, sad expression that you can just describably see in the face, in the facial features. So, to me, I think Ian Flynn realized he kind of screwed up a little bit. And whether AWF, Captain AWF wants to admit it or not, you know, Ian, yes, he may have killed off Sally temporarily and brought her back about an issue or so later for the Sonic Genesis arc, and then later on for her to be roboticized. But, you know, even though he did that, I think he realized that even if he wanted to keep it permanent, that history may repeat itself and Sega may step in and say, no, you're not going to do that. Which is why he was only able to do what he did. So... So again, though, it makes you wonder if he realized he screwed up with this one and decided in the universe arc, or in one of the universe arcs, to give Sally a new power ring, which is Ken Khan's ring crown, which kind of basically would be, uh, would allow her, I should say, to, to regain her free will you know, very slowly, not quickly, but slowly. You know, you have to wonder if he did that to rectify, oh, wait a minute, fans are going to probably see through this and realize that I'm, you know, I'm, you know, realize that I'm kind of screwing up a little bit here, or this doesn't make sense, you know, if you catch my drift. You know, you have to wonder about that. You have to really wonder. But that's not the only thing I want to talk about, and I will try to timestamp this. The next thing I want to talk about is something really interesting. Something that Ken Pender said in response to a fan. A fan, I think it's the same person, juice it, Luke if you will, that asked him this question about Fiona. Fiona Fox, that is. So, the second thing I want to talk about, and again this will be timestamped hopefully, is the whole is the whole Fiona Fox deal. We all know how people kind of are mixed about it, right? Mostly a lot of fans are not particularly fond of it. Some are okay with it. But I think it was Luke. Again, it was Juice at Luke that kind of asked Ken Penders if he would have turned Fiona um, into a bad girl, into a bad guy, uh, a tweener, anti-antagonist, whatever you want to call it. If he would have done it because... Luke, Juicet, basically points out to Penders that Ian Flynn did it because he felt that Fiona was boring and by turning her into a villain made her more interesting. Ken's response was pretty much, well, if a writer wants to do that add to a character just because they want to make him interesting, it shows that they have no imagination whatsoever. Or something along those lines. But yeah, Penders basically said <laughs> in his own right that no, he wouldn't have turned Fiona bad. He would have found another way to make her interesting, to you know, you know, get her focused on and everything, get some spotlight on her. He even acknowledged that the reason he had Sonic with Fiona was it was only going to be a temporary deal because the reason they had fl you know put, been put together in this temporary fling, if you will. You know, in this temporary fling, as he as he described it, was because they were both trying to get over things, like Sonic trying to get over Sally and Fiona trying to get over her past, stuff like that, which is why they gravitated towards each other. You know, they gravitated towards each other. 
And uh, again, he said it's only temporary. He said it was only temporary, which I think is a good as much as you may not like Penders, I think it's a good answer because if that is the case, you know, I think that would have made more sense. And for him to come out straight up and say, Ian, you have no imagination whatsoever because you decided, hey, I'm going to turn Fiona Fox you know, into a heel, into a villain, you know, into a tweener antagonist, if you will, because I find her boring. And... You know, that's Pender's opinion, but I think a lot of people for this time around would agree with Pender's that, you know, it would have that it would have been easier to probably probably go in the direction of finding a different way to make her interesting instead of making her evil. Or at least a turncoat. But do you think Pender's has a point? Do you think Flynn did it because he wasn't just finding Fiona boring, but you know, he just lacked the imagination of to figure out what else to do with her besides turn her evil. What are your thoughts? Let me know down below in the comments, as well as in the live chat during the premiere. Like the video. Also, give me your thoughts on what I talked about in the first part of this about the whole, you know, Mecha Sally modified power ring deal that just doesn't make sense in my opinion. Let me know what your thoughts are. Comment below. Live chat during the premiere. And until next time, guys. Oh, and super thanks. We'll be open after the premiere so you guys can help me out there financially if you choose to do so. And until next time, guys, I am out. Correction, it wasn't uh, Juice It Luke that asked Ken that question. It was Phantom uh, Drake 25. Yeah, Phantom Drake 25 is the one that asked uh, those questions. Um, but yeah, uh, Juice It Luke did you know, talk about something else as well, along with Phantom Drake and all that. But yeah, Phantom Drake asked Ken uh, the question of, when you were writing the main book, was it your, ever your intention to turn Fiona traitor? And then Ken responded later on um, by saying, uh, back on May 20th, she was never meant to become a villain under his watch. He matched her up with Sonic as a temporary thing until both realized they were simply having a fling to get over hard times. Uh, Phantom uh, Drake uh, responded by saying, a real shame that Ian Flynn never saw it that way. He and his buddies considered her to be boring, so he decided to turn her evil to make her more interesting. All it did was bastardize the character. Same could be said for Jeffrey St. John, who Flynn may also made tra uh, traitorous. Ken then responded by saying, A writer who thinks turning a character into a bad guy is a solution to making a character interesting displays a, lack of a, a, certain, displays a certain lack of imagination. There are many ways of making a character interesting without going into, stero stero into stereotypes or cliches. And um, uh, Phantom Drake then responded, responded by agree saying, Agreed, do you believe that Flynn really respects the old Archie lore and universe, or was he looking to shape it into his own vision? And um, Ken said at one point he may have, that being Ian Flynn may have had respect for the old Archie lore, but that changed when he took possession of the car keys. In other words, became the head rider. And uh, yeah, pretty much... Um, you know, pretty much basically, uh, Phantom Drake just doesn't really trust Ian as much. He even said he figures as much. This is one of his last responses. He says he figures as much because even, because there are even those who believe he hated, hated the Freedom Fighters and everything that happened to them in the comic under his pen was mean-spirited. He actually had Sally killed once before hitting the reset button and was allegedly going to kill off Antoine. You know, and they said Flynn honestly thought people didn't like Antoine. And that was about it. So, yeah, um, he basically, um, he basically, uh, just pretty much has said that, um, Ken Penders, that is, and this is a bit of an extension of the, of this one. It's kind of a long second half, if you will, of it. Um. You know, it's kind of a second, kind of a long extension of the second part. But uh, yeah, uh, Ken basically said, "Look, you know, look, I'm not going to, you know, turn 
watch someone like Fiona traitorous because you know I find her boring. He would, like I said, mentioned earlier, he said he would have found more inter another way to make her interesting. And that it, the fling thing, the her and Sonic being together, was only a temporary deal. But again, let me know what your guys' thoughts are overall. Comment if you like. Love to hear from each and every one of you on this. And I.